All right, so this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is uh, uh, Texas releases a 10 most wanted illegal migrant list, guys. Uh, let's go and check it out. Let's see what this takes us, guys. Uh, what exactly are they wanted for? Uh, but either way, let's go and find out. Welcome back. Well, there were reportedly 10,000 migrants in Border Patrol custody yesterday. That's four okay. times <laughs> the limit set by President Biden's border executive right. action announced earlier in the week. Four times. Four the times. New York Post is reporting that leaked documents reveal tens of thousands of migrants could be exempt from these new Biden restrictions. Exempt. They write, quote, a memo seen by the Post reads this. Single adults and family units who are very hard to remove may be considered for processing of expedited removal or placed into Section 240 removal proceedings. In plain English, Section 240 removal means they're released into the United States. Okay. President Biden was asked about his border action last night on ABC News. Watch. Do you wish you had done it sooner? No, because I would. <laughs> That's enough. Have, that, then I would have been blamed for blowing up the agreement. Your opponent, Donald Trump, he has said of your executive action, he's pretending to finally do something about the border. Biden's executive is. order is weak and pathetic. Is he describing himself? Weak and pathetic? Uh, bro, I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> Come on. Look, everybody knows what's happened. We had a deal. It was much broader than this, much better, much more accepted across the board. And he got on the phone and told the Republicans, don't support it. It will hurt me. It will help Biden. Joining me now live from Mission, Texas, is Texas okay. Department of Public Safety, Lieutenant Christopher Olivares. Lieutenant we'll see where that statement takes us, but let's continue. Great to see you. Thanks, thanks very much for being Good here. You, Good morning. I want to get your take on what the border encounters look like and assess the area for us post-President Biden's executive order. What are you seeing? Well, Maria, good morning. Of course, there has not been any immediate change as far as any significance of a decrease in legal border crossings since the announcement of the executive order. In fact, quite the contrary, uh, the numbers as far as daily numbers of the lawful crossings remain the same and an average of 4,000 a day. Mm -hmm. That's between ports of entry. That's not taken into account. Those that are being processed at a, at a port of entry through the CBP-1 app or those that are being processed that are being directly flown in from other countries into the United States. So there has not been a decrease at all whatsoever uh, since this announcement. One thing I can tell you, though, in Texas, though, ever since January, Maria, there has been a 74 percent decrease in unlawful border crossings in Texas because of our efforts, because of Operation Lone Star, because of what Governor Abbott has put in place and because of tremendous work that our state troopers and National Guard soldiers have been doing on the front lines every single day. Now we're seeing this paradigm shift to the West, Arizona, San Diego. They're experiencing an influx because in those areas, you don't have National Guard. You don't have barriers. You don't have consequences. And one thing that really stood out to me, Maria, and I think it's very important for the audience to understand, is that this executive order has so many exemptions. And it's, it's going to create more of an incentive for people to actually make their way to the border and cross illegally. Uh, for one, there's some countries that are not going to accept their own people back into their countries. Um, you're going to see a more increase of unaccompanied children because they are exempt from this executive order as well as medical conditions. So now that gives the Mexican cartels nice. more uh, leverage to use because of this executive order. And they're gonna exploit on, more children. On. They're gonna become more uh, victimized because of the situation that are gonna be coming across the border. So- Okay, hold on, hold on. All right, so who will not, okay, so obviously um, visa holders, that, I, don't, I have no idea why that's even here. Uh, if you have a visa, you're allowed to come in. That's doing it the legal way, guys. So I don't know why that, so. It wouldn't apply anyway, so you could probably just take, take that one off there. Uh, unaccompanied children. Um, I'm not really a fan of that specific line there, guys, because um, we've noticed uh, specifically with some people coming across the border, uh, what they've been saying is that they've been 22, 23 years old and coming through saying that they're 16. Bro, you're not, you are grown, you are not 16, but um, that's the scary one. Because we know that there are instances where people are lying about their age and saying that they are very much so younger than they are. Um, okay, so if you're trying, okay. Uh, and then again, the, the CBP-1 app, this is a legal pathway. These two here are legal pathways. So that's not really the big deal there, guys. The, on these two, at least. But all right, let's go. On this executive order, as well as medical conditions. So now that gives the Mexican cartels more uh, leverage to use because it doesn't address the gotaways it doesn't address actually preventing criminals that are entering our country illegally and actually going after those criminals that are in the country that are committing crimes
Yeah, I think you make such a great point, and it's the point that I made yesterday. And that is, if you've got all these exemptions, like unaccompanied children are exempt, of course the drug cartels are going to exploit that. Of course they're going to go and quote unquote rent more kids, send them through, and then get them to pay their parents or whoever's going to pay for them, and they're just going to exploit children. I mean, this is actually really serious, what you just mentioned, and I agree that that's what you would expect. Yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't expect that, but... What I would expect is for them to know that and then tell all of the 21-year-olds say that they're underage. A moment ago, I just mentioned that there are 10,000 people right now in Border Patrol, um, and that's four times what the president is saying. I mean, he says that he's going to shut down the border when it reaches 2,500 a day. Obviously, people who want to come to America and people who want have bad intentions are not going to say, oh, well, Biden has 2,500. I better not go today. Uh, so where are these people going to go? If you're telling me it's 4,000 a day right now where you are, I know the peak was all the way up to 8,000 a day, right? Well, absolutely. Right? Of course, now, you know, of course, the southwest border daily average has been about 4,000. But right now in Texas, as I mentioned, we've seen a 74 percent decrease. So the numbers are very minimal as far as the lawful border crossings between the ports of entry in Texas because of our efforts. Now, going back to what I mentioned earlier, and of course, what you mentioned uh, during your intro, talking about some of these exemptions and how they're using some of this uh, this wording, which also means, obviously, it's another word for just releasing individuals into the country, which they're going to continue doing. So it doesn't create any type of deterrence. In fact, it creates an incentive now where they want to try to normalize a threshold number to make it normal and also, also to legalize illegal immigration. That's what we're seeing right now. And it just, like I said, it gives the cartels more leverage to exploit the situation, especially children. Right now, there's no DNA testing that's being done. So even adults right. that are bringing children across, you don't know for a fact right. that that is their actual family member. And now, and that's what's going to happen. See, like, this guy here is a little bit more logical. I like this guy here. Um, because of this year. Yeah, there are going to be issues with cartels specifically being like, hey, listen, um, these kids or the, these really young adults, they're like 19. Right. How about you just say you, they're all part of your family uh, and then that's it. Like, do you not think that they they don't see the news? They see the news because right they're, they're a couple of steps ahead, but also at the same time, they don't care. They're still making their money. Right. And so just like the migrants that have been traveling for most likely weeks upon weeks upon weeks, um, Biden just enacted this. Right. Uh, so they don't know. And we won't even know if it even made it made any type of difference un- for multiple, multiple weeks. Guys. Right. Um, I think that's the overall well, the reality here. Guys. Now with this executive order, the cartels are going to take well advantage of that and continue to exploit children. Right. Of course. I, I want to get your take on what Texas Governor uh, Greg Abbott announced this week, and that is a top 10 most wanted list of criminal illegal migrants uh, in partnership with you and the Texas DPS. The migrants on this list are wanted for assault and making threats. Lieutenant Oliveira, as you say, Texas DPS has arrested its first criminal migrant on the list who was wanted for Tell us about this list. You know, Maria, this is another example of Texas actually taking, you know, this decisive action, especially from our leadership, from Governor Abbott, our legislatures, our leadership within the agency to actually come up and launch this program in partnership with Governor Abbott's office and the Texas Crime Stoppers to create a 10 most wanted criminal illegal immigrants list. These are dangerous individuals that have committed crimes in Texas, and some of them have been deported and they have re-entered the country because, of course, we know what's happening right now because when you have an unsecured border, you're going to have criminals from around the world that yep, are going to make a lawful in. entry, which pose a significant threat to public safety and national security. These are dangerous criminals ranging from crimes from you know, burglary, assault, crimes with children. And the individual that we arrested yesterday was wanted for. So these are dangerous individuals. Right now, uh, since June 2011, we have documented well over 305,000 uh, classified illegal immigrants that have committed crimes in Texas. Out of that number, 11,000 of those are wanted and 4,000 of those are wanted for serious felonies. So these are dangerous criminals. But again, it shows what type of action we are taking where we we are actually addressing border security in texas we want to actually apprehend identify and arrest these criminals and take them to jail so one thing that's very important to the maria is that we need the public's help they're the ones that can provide information on these wanted individuals so that's why i ask anybody out there that has information on any of these individuals you can go to our texas dps website or the governor's website uh you can call 1-800-252-tips 
That's, that's our tips hotline. And you can provide okay. information for a cash reward so we can actually identify and bring these individuals to justice. Well, we've been worried about this uh, Venezuelan gang that we've heard about that's raging around in New York right now. The NYPD told us uh, that this gang from Venezuela is incredibly dangerous. Are, are, are those people on the list part of a, a, a gang? What, what's, what's your, yeah, it's Trende Aragua is the, is the gang that I'm referring to. Yes, Maria, of course, you know, we do have criminal gang members that are on this list. And that's why it's yeah. so important we talk about border security mm. and how the federal government has abdicated their responsibility to prevent the unlawful entry of criminal legal immigrants to include criminal gangs. Yeah. You know, before we would always talk about MS-13, but now we're seeing yeah, this new gang days. from Venezuela, which is a prison gang, which they have established themselves in the country because, again, they've been allowed to enter the country wow. legally. Right. We've seen all these crimes that are taking place. And they're like in every single state now. In the country because, again... They've been allowed to enter the country wow. legally. We've seen all these crimes that are taking place in New York. Most recently, the two officers in New York that were shot, they were shot by one of these criminals that was part of a criminal gang from Venezuela. Right. So very important. It's very critical that we have these type of programs in place so we can track down these criminals and bring them right. to justice. Mm. Well, no wonder we've got these new Fox News polls that find voters in four states trust Trump over Biden to do a better job handling both the border crisis and immigration in general. In Florida, voters favor Trump to handle the issue by 21 points. In Arizona, it's 20 points. Voters favor Trump by 17 points in Virginia and by 22 points in Nevada. Uh, Lieutenant, everybody knows that under the Trump administration, these numbers were very different. And, you know, the people who were coming here were, were much lower numbers. Absolutely, Maria. Of course, you know, the American people are well aware of what's taking place. Um, they are upset. It is impacting them as well. We've seen so many crimes taking place throughout the country. So many victims that have been victimized by some of these criminal legal immigrants that have been able to enter the country illegally. Uh, yeah. Fentanyl, so many victims that have died because of fentanyl poisoning. And we see what's happening right now. That's why every state is a border state. It does impact every single person in this country. And that's why it all goes back to having strong, decisive leadership that's willing to take action, that's willing to prioritize the safety and security of the American people in our country. All right, guys, we'll, we'll go back to uh, for a second here. Um, something that I think she said. In Arizona, it's 20 points. Voters oh. favor Trump by 17 points in Virginia and by 22 points in Nevada. Uh, Lieutenant, everybody knows that under the Trump administration, these numbers were very different. And, you know, the people who were coming here were, uh, were much lower numbers. All right, and the reason why that is, let, let's go ahead and just explain that. Um, obviously, anyone, no matter who that person was, um, doesn't matter at all. But anyone that is attempting to control migration right now is going to be going through it. It doesn't matter who the person is. And I'm going to tell, tell you why, for example. Um, like, you can frighten the people into not coming. That may be an option. I, I guess it should. I mean, that's a crazy option, right? But um, <laughs> I don't think the UN will like that very much. But the thing is, though, or the hog, at least, right? Um, but the reality is, is that when, when Trump was president, uh, what was going on in the world at that time, right? The 19 just hit, right? That was there. Um, and people were not moving. Right? There was there was no movement. You can come outside. So obviously the numbers of people that were coming and hitting the border were lower. Right. That's just the the logic of that. Right. Uh, and now Biden is president. And now we are multiple, multiple years after the 19 had, has ended um, and the destruction of what happened during the 19 internationally. Is has been crazy. Right? Look at Think about this here. Um, inflation in the United States of America is crazy and if everyone is using our currency as a reserve currency for the most part uh, imagine how expensive things got in other countries the reason why there's so much migrants moving uh, internationally and i mean this it's not just here um internationally it's because of the damage that 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 our dollar rising right actually lowering in value tremendously right um has been let's say it, it's it's also wrecked all these other nations and so now everyone is just like huh well gonna go to america that's what's going on right and so the reason why the numbers are are higher now and they were lower before is because of what's been going on in the world um geopol geopolitics uh, politics guys um basically speaks on that if you just look around the world at what's actually happening right um you'll realize instantly it just it is what it was going to happen no matter what 
progress. Um, does it need to slow down? Yeah, tremendously. It, I mean, we can't take the whole world's population. Like we, we, we have the land for it, but we don't have. We, we can't do it, bro. Right? There needs to be some other countries, like maybe some ones in North Europe, that would, you know, they could actually take on a lot more people. Uh, for example, because <laughs> well, for some reason, um, everyone is flocking to us, um, and it definitely does need to slow. The reality of that case. But all right, listen, uh, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day. Thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.